So you guys have what a new thing coming out, right? Yeah, for the first time in um, a long time, uh, working on this project, we're gonna have a public build available on the site. I believe Ooh. tomorrow, twenty fourth. Happens to be my birthday as well. By the time this video is gonna be up, right? Well, yeah, sure. Now, who are you guys actually? Um, my name is Amir Kella. I'm a program manager on the interactive designer team. Okay. Uh, and who are you? And I'm Brad Becker, and I'm a senior product manager for the Expression family of tools. Ah, so we got marketing here, we got management overhead. <laughs> <laughs> and, and what do you and do? An no, and an architect. No. <laughs> and everybody else is down the hall coding we don't like that, right? Anymore. <laughs> Trying to fix bugs for tomorrow. Yeah. yeah. So, um, so what? What's we saw Sh Sparkle? What? Four months ago, right? Yes. Three months ago, four months ago. September, right? September, yeah, right before the PDC, right? Mm -hmm. What's new? What's new? Uh, uh, we completely we were, different look. We worked a lot on the shell, making it uh, completely consistent. Um, great performance and great stability. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, we worked a lot on getting the, pro the product very, very performant for, for this milestone. And the results are just amazing. It's dramatic. Yeah. Now, now, I used to be a designer, and we talked about this, I think, in, in your first interview. I, I never was as good as you are. <laughs> well. I don't know if everybody on the camera knows, but you, you, you are like a god in the design world, and you used to do keynotes at all sorts of weird conferences. Uh, right. I spoke at you know, Flash Forward conferences and stuff like that, and uh, Micromedia Web World, Flash Kit, and yeah. participated in some books, projects, but I, I've done it recently even, but not as much as before, yeah. Right. Not if I was a god at all, but yeah. I had fun. Fun in the community, definitely. Just communicating with people and you know, finding techniques to do things and, and following trends. And yeah. Now, when I talk to my friends who are designers, and, and when I go back to my old experience before I worked here at Microsoft, there were two knocks against Microsoft in the design world, right? One is the products looked cool, but when you actually scratched under the surface, they didn't do enough for the professional, right? Mm -hmm. you, you, you know, you, you uh, look at something that would compare to like Photoshop or, or you know, uh, PageMaker. Mm -hmm. And it just didn't, you know, you, you would go eight tenths of the way and then you would have to start up another tool. Yeah. Right? And I'd like to see you guys, see how good this tool is, right? Well, yeah, I mean, we, we definitely aim at the professional uh, user, interface, user interface designer here. And, um, you know, big emphasis in, is about integrating into a pipeline development team. You know, people who use Visual Studio already, if they have MS Build running, and, you know, they need somebody to come in and edit all the assets that go into the user interface, this is where we come in. And uh, it's, it's definitely a production tool more than a, you know, conceptualization, conceptualized tool you know, from a different country. So I'm still yeah. learning your language. <laughs> um, but uh, it's... Our scenarios, our research we did early on years ago was all about you know, professional tools and professionals. Um, in fact, when we talk about features around tables, we say, well, wouldn't it be great if there was just a, you know, a thing where you press and it kind of like does you know, a lot of things for you? I always kind of raise my hand and say, well, wait, hold on a second. You know, products that did this in the past were perceived as you know, unprofessional, whatever, and you want to go in there and really touch the engine. So we did as much as we could so that this felt like VS to developers, and the same as it feels to developers. Um, Yes, feels to developers. We want to feel that the same way to user interface designers. Right. So, you know, I, it does, I mean, one of the things about any professional is that they want um, control. They want control over their craft and over the, their media, whatever they're working in, whether it's developers with code or whether it's designers with the look and feel and the interaction design. Um, they want to have control over that. And they don't want to have something, a lot of things happening behind the scenes that they're not sure exactly what's going on. Right. So. The second knock I, I heard was Microsoft doesn't show up in the design space, right? We, we don't take design seriously. We don't come to the flash forward style conferences or show up to Jeffrey Sullivan's house or whatever, <laughs> um, mm -hmm. where other companies take the design world much more serious. And it, how is yeah. that going to change with this product? Well, you know, that, that was part of the mission as well, you know, to just understand the people, get a lot of them, these guys here, that's why I'm here too. Yeah. Uh, and, uh, you know, Microsoft has just, just it has a lot of uh, potential to, to, to do it well and to, you know, communicate with a large number of people like this, understand this audience. It takes a long time to get in a new space though, so yeah. um, Brad may have more details about how you get there. Um, I think the first thing is to understand the users and research them and, and test stuff on them. 
So we're starting. We're just starting. It's going to go for a long time and far. You know, we really want to get there, and uh, you know, it is a new market for us, definitely. Yeah, and that would probably lead into to maybe the second and a half or third third thing I hear is that Microsoft follows into markets and doesn't lead. You know, and designers once they find a tool that works. It, it's hard to get them to switch. Yeah. You know, once you, sure. you, you you still see tools like Photoshop that were de developed 15 years ago, and yep. th and they're still leading the space, right. even though there's other competitors, not just Microsoft, but other competitors mm -hmm. that do more, or are even more modern or better user interface. Mm -hmm. And it's hard to get de developers or designers to switch into a new a new idea. Right. Yeah. 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 I think that's so. I think that's always true that it's hard for people to make shifts and new things. The one one thing that Expression Interactive Designer has is that um, there really isn't anything else like it. So this is a tool for building kind of the next generation of applications. So it doesn't really compare to anything else um, that I've seen. Um, it should be somewhat familiar to professional designers. Um, you know, obviously there's a timeline in there, and you have. Um, there is code underneath um, that you can you can do a lot without having to code, but you can also work. A, a lot of what we're emphasizing is the workflow between designers and developers, yeah. and um, basically the great things happen. You know whether it's the seven wonders of the world. You had um, you had architects and artisans. You had you know sculptors and stonemasons working together, and it's going to be the same kind of thing with these advanced um, applications that are coming. You saw the same thing in, in uh, like in computer games. Yeah. You know, like 15 years ago, a guy in his room could make a computer game, and now it's teams of people. It's writers and it's programmers and it's artists, artists. working together. And I think that as we get to uh, more and more sophisticated applications, you're going to see the same thing happening. So here we have the tool well, that well, is for somebody like Manuel, and yeah. you know, it's uh, for interaction designers who can come in. They can prototype things, they can mock it up, they can add interactivity and give it life really quickly, get feedback, and then get developers involved to do any you know heavy lifting on the coding end. Um, so it's a good model. Since it sounds like you're saying we're, we're first and we're uh, you know, going down a new path that nobody else has gone down before, where those have been successful is when there's been paradigm shifts. You know, mm -hmm. PageMaker came right, right during the the laser printer when Steve Jobs came out with the laser printer in the mid '80s, right? And and the Macintosh yep. came out. Desktop publishing. Desktop publishing, right? And then uh, Photoshop came out right before the digital. Because I was at the first photo marketing association where they, right. where Kodak even was showing off the first digital printers, and Photoshop came out at that show. Mm -hmm. And that was obviously a paradigm shift. I mean, yeah. even when you were there at that time. So what is the paradigm shift at this point in time? Why? Why is uh, interactive designer the answer? Why at this point in time is there a paradigm shift going on? So I think that there's been um, a groundswell of people being aware of how experience um, kind of changes things. And um, you know, there's a lot of examples that you'll hear about whether it's Starbucks or whether it's the iPod or whatever that people right now are willing to pay money for experience and, and end users, if you will, actually really care about the total experience. You know. Um, and for for decades we've been talking about you know software being user friendly or we, there's other other terms and it's always been on the radar but I think now that um, the hardware has gotten relatively fast for for many tasks and um, a lot of other advancements have happened it's kind of in some ways the last thing it's kind of like computer science waited for the softer stuff for the last you know saved it for the last because it was the, the the trickiest to define so I think that we're seeing an increased focus there. Um, all across the industry and multiple industries, really. And frankly, Microsoft is not really following this market. Uh, I see it as a big leader because everyone has been, has been seeing the products. The word we get is finally. Finally, somebody gets it for designers to sit with developers and have a clear goal and clear separation of roles. You know, you guys don't mess up with our code. We want to mess up with your design. And it's complete smooth integration between these two worlds. And I haven't seen any product in the market that does it at least this well. So people have been using different products to do mockups and you know throw them away, get other mockups, and then once someone likes the mockups, you know let's take them to production. But in Sparkle or in Active Designer, you can start with the mockups and convert them into actually a production model, um, add vertical functionality, and you got your product. Yep. Well, we spent eleven and a half minutes talking about it. Why don't we see it? <laughs>
I can show you some. Uh, oh. We got a couple, couple got of the screens set okay. up for you. Some, I'm gonna start. So this monitor is yours, right? Yeah. Okay. Uh, first of all, I love image browsing. Yeah. And I love Flickr. I love just going there, searching for hey, stuff. And, I got a yeah. Flickr feed. <laughs> uh, I'm gonna see that. So what I did is that I sat down. I said um, there are tons of uh, Flickr browsers done with lots of technologies. How long should it take me to do a Flickr browser in Interactive Designer? Uh, so I sat down and I did this small sample here. Um, and it's basically a bunch of search widgets, navigation widgets, and a master detail interface. Uh, so I'm going to search for, well, let me actually search for something more interesting. I almost, uh, that's, I not more interesting. Say that. <laughs> that's not more interesting. That's not more interesting. Okay, so I see that it's like a. a so many people have pictures here, of you. Uh, there you go, the dude. That looks like party we have inside here. Sunny autograph. <laughs> so I can see there is a bit of interactivity when you switch pictures. It actually works on the keyboard as well. Accessible out of the box. Uh, sometimes you see white images here because you need to be logged on to see the images. Uh, right. um, again, one of the most powerful features in. Uh, WPF that we exposed with Sparkle is the ability of having dynamic layout. So when I resize the application here, the layout knows how to resize oh, itself cool. accordingly. And you can see everything is smoothly animated. And this was all done in, in, in <laughs> sorry, interactive designer, right? Yeah, we're going to show you. <laughs> I keep calling it Sparkle. That's okay. How dare you? We're going to show you in just a second. Okay. We're going to build this. But there's no other tools used to make this happen. No. Now, hey, one thing I will say, though, is that um, since we're talking about other tools, um, one of the advantages that we have is we have a strong developer platform with Visual Studio, and with SQL Server, and everything else, and this integrates right in. So the project files that we open are Visual Studio project files, and so designers and developers can work together on the same files. Um, there's no, like, obfuscated binary formats or whatever. This is all... Um, basically XML and you know in this case probably C sharp code is that what you're using it? Yeah. This yeah. Is the so whole it's thing is about it's all diffable. It's all you can use version control easily and designers and developers are actually working the same files instead of designers creating a you know a, a PSD or PNG file and then a developer trying to look at a printout and, and decide how big something is or whatever. So right. I can even see a place, see, even in this app already, where a developer might get involved, right? So uh, you could do world, word wheeling, so as you type ROB, it could already go and predict yep, what, exactly, what exactly. pictures you go so to. So what I did here is that I tried to wear the designer's hat, uh, mostly development and program management, but uh, I worked with one of the wizards in our team, Peter Blois, and he was really providing me with lots of functionalities. So the interactive, uh, this is a wrap panel that has been uh, written with a custom control to have you to get you this smooth animation it works every time you relay out something inside it so I can actually decide the thumbnail size here and you're just moving that little uh, bar this yeah. is really cool slowly a little bit more you can see I'm resizing the thumbnails okay. it's pretty performant get it up here and uh, the way I did it is I communicated with one of the developers telling him see I want these features in my uh, product, how can I have them? And he said, well, okay, I can actually send you a bunch of custom controls, um, whether in C-sharp uh, format or as a DLL as a control library. And what I do is this, I import them inside Sparkle, and I build my project, and it appears in the library as a custom control that I can use in my project. So, the inter so what we're trying to do in Sparkle is actually establish a clear contract between designers and developers. Here's what I need. Here's what you need to give me. I won't touch your code. You won't touch my design. Right. And like seeing the code going back and forth between me and him, I never touch his code at all. Yeah. All I do now is now. How much? C, how much code is? Is this all written in C I, sharp underneath, or is this, there any code I'm going to show you well, how much code control. Has. Yes. Uh, Amir is going to talk about this. That's the biggest shift, though. You you asked us. You know, when there's a big shift, people do appreciate new tools. It's when they do something completely new. I do think the integration of dev and design is is crucial. If you give a little bit to designers where they can actually look at some code, they get interested in it a little bit. Or here, they can really get interested in it if they want to. They have the whole .NET framework under it and stuff like that. But mm -hmm. able to seemingly integrate the two is, is brand new stuff and it's great. Are you ready? Yep. So 
this is all the C-sharp code in it. It's 111 lines, including... Um, including the blank lines. Copious weights. Yeah, yes. including blank <laughs> lines, including just setting the mouse cursor to weight or to arrow. So it's mostly... Are you going to give this sample out tomorrow? or? Yes, yes. Um, uh, we're planning to put many samples online. There is actually the expression team log which is um, blogs.msdn.com slash expression and on the expression website microsoft.com slash expression there is a list of people people's blogs here and uh, people are putting lots of uh, samples online. What I'm going to show here is actually how to recreate most of the functionality of this sample in about 10-15 minutes in Interactive Designer just going through all the interface show you the workflow, show you how easy it is to integrate everything together. That sounds great. Okay. All right, so I'm gonna close this one. I'm gonna start with a blank project. We call it uh, All right, so right here, Sparkle created a an empty scene for me. And uh, first, first you, you you set up an EXE, right? So this this builds full. Application. Yes, we're using, a, MS build. we're using MS Build. This isn't a weird file format. No, no, no. What I created now is actually a CS project. Okay. So the format and here is .cs. Are you going to talk about deployment at the end? Sure. Yeah. Okay. We'll come you back to that. You the project files right there too. So actually, if I go on project and I say, um, actually, oh, I need actually to save, save the project. Here, let me show it. Let me save it on my desktop. And then I'm going to explore project. And everything here is basically what almost create with a uh, with Visual Studio. You have your, you know, it creates XAML file, C sharp file. This is the the key that used for deployment. Right. And it's a CS project. And this is application.xaml, application.cs. So okay. It's if I open this with VS, it's gonna completely open. It's completely uh, transparent file format between both of them. Right. So uh, first thing is I'm gonna add. Uh, a bit of um, back end to my product. What I, do, what I have here is Flickr.net, um, which is an API that we um, downloaded from God.net. Okay. And it's open source. Uh, we're using it, and we wrapped it. We wrapped it around with Flickr effects. And again, Peter Boy is the um, whole wrapping. So we we do it in terms of seal art data objects. So designers can actually use the fields in the data object to drag and drop on the scene without needing to write any code. Okay. So I'm going to start by importing these two DLLs here. Let's say open, and they've been imported in my references here. Okay. Uh, this is the project palette. And then I'm going to go to the data palette and I say add CLR data object. And I'm going to add my Flickr search object in the Flickr effects. Yeah. In space. So now, once I added it, all these fields that are in the data object are listed in my data palette. Okay. So now I can use them in my application by either drawing and linking to it or just drag and drop. What are the three most important ones down there? Right here, I think search text, which is basically the search, the keyword you're using. Okay. And start searching command, which is a, uh, a um, delegate command, which is basically you know, link to the button saying start my search. And finally, there is uh, photos. Uh, bracket n, which basically it says that this is an array of photos that I can link to any kind of uh, items container. Okay. Um, now there is a, a tweak that I did to the source code here to make to trigger one search from inside Sparkle once I add the data objects. So now I think this is one of the most unique things about interactive design is that you can actually see runtime data at design time. What I'm going to work with is actual images from the Flickr server that I connected and I got my images from in design time. At the, wow, that's cool. So, so you don't have to compile and wait for things no, to come down. No, I actually work on actual images instead here. Wow. Okay. Uh, so you're not called cool anymore, it's EID. <laughs> <laughs> actually, I think people are going to know it as Sparkle for, for a long time because I think Sparkle is a cool. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so you're gonna, yeah. You're gonna get fired by the marketing Sorry, department. <laughs> so no. The branding police are gonna come and visit you. And <laughs> we got the scoble protection. Looks like you can do anything you want. That's so, true. You know. <laughs> <laughs> All right.
<laughs> so what I'm gonna do is actually a rough layout here. Okay. I have my uh, my document route is a grid, and what I'm gonna do is uh, I want to create a uh, master detail interface. So I'm probably gonna slice the scene like uh, roughly this um, size, and I want to create a uh, top row for my um, search widgets. Yeah. And by clicking the lock here, what I'm doing actually right now is that on the fly I'm creating grid rows and create grid columns. Uh -huh. uh, so the lock here says that whenever I resize the parent container, which is the window for this guy, yeah. don't resize. Uh, just keep your size uh, fixed. That cell. That yeah. Row. So that cell won't stretch. Yeah. It'll, it'll always be exactly. at that proportion. Yeah. So now I created top row for the search widgets, I'm going to create the bottom row for the navigation widgets. Yep. And under the same, I'm going to lock it. Okay. So now I need to insert my widgets into uh, these areas. Uh, I'm going to start by putting a label here. Uh, I'm, I'm going to go to my library palette. And library palette is basically a collection of all the libraries uh, exposed by the system and all the libraries that I have included here. So even you know, the Flickr effects and Flickr net are exposed here. Right. And we have uh, keyboard navigation, so I can type LA and I go, go to label. And I'm going to just draw a label right here. Oops, sorry. And my content will be. And you have a lot of snap to grids and stuff. That's really cool. Actually, snap to grid is, is one thing that we're still working on. Okay. Uh, what you have here is not really snapping. Again, these, are, uh -huh. these anchors, they tell you how this control will resize when these grid lines resize with a parent container. Okay. So this is unanchored, which means this guy will be will resize vertically but not horizontally. If I if I uncheck this one, it means this guy will always stick to these uh, two, two borders. Yeah. But since I have this one fixed size, I don't care about having this checked or unchecked because this is gonna be fixed anyways. Got it. So I changed my label here to keyword. And then the magic begins from the data palette. Everything is drag and drop to the scene. I'm sorry, where are you driving? Okay. There we go. So this is data palette. Yep. Um, search text. I see that search text is a field of type string. Yep. So I probably need to data bind it to a uh, text box. Yep. So I'm just going to drag and drop Oop. right here and say I want to create a text box. And it tells me which, which field of the text box you want to data bind to. This is the create data binding dialog. Okay. So what I want here is actually to bind the text and uh, have a two-way binding, which means whenever the source gets modified, the interface gets modified and vice versa. Now I noticed your uh, your dialogs look different than the common gray Windows dialogs, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we, we have application resources, so stuff that that's some of the work I've been doing is um, creating new controls like text box and stuff like that and, and, and then putting them in the application called Sparkle, EID, and, uh, and then they're available to everything, you know, palettes and then also dialogue so that, you know, we have a, a consistent look and feel across and we're not 100% we're not there on that build, but, you know, we're getting there. And you're building all these in, inside uh, Interaction Design? Yes, I am. That's kind of like this. You asked for a paradigm shift as well. You have a large scale application. And I can do a lot of the UI, and you know, I don't have to ask people around for six months to change something and go in there and hack it up and actually build it locally and say, mm, not good enough, and actually try again. There's quick iteration process, it's great. Yes, using the ID. And also, you can by hand as well. You know, if I'm comfortable doing some things by hand in, this, in XML, I can go do that as well. It's not binary, it's easy to change. Okay. So, we're designing Sparkle again, Sparkle. That's we call it fooding our own product. We call it Sparkle Eats Sparkle. That's one of the demos we used to do is bring in, the, the, bring in one of the palettes, changing it, and then compiling Sparkle in Sparkle. It's like the, the old compiler compiling itself kind of thing. Yeah. And, uh, you know, that, that the audience would go, whoa, ah, you know. It's pretty cool. Yeah, it's so actually cool. one guy wearing a T-shirt uh, in the hall just saying, my compiler compiled yours. So I think we need to have one of these. <laughs> That's cool. That's an idea. All right, My design so, tool designed yours. <laughs> well, maybe. So now I have a text box here, yeah. and uh, this is the, the default value for uh, the corresponding variable in the data object. And as you see, like when I'm, whenever I'm resizing it, you see that the smart anchors here they actually tend to know whether I wanted uh, 
to what to anchor which uh, grid line, and also yeah. if I want it open or closed anchoring, as you see on the bottom here. Right. All right. So now I need a button to start the search, and again, okay. it's drag and drop from the data palette. You move too fast. <laughs> uh, and I'm gonna bind it to button. Yep. And instead of binding the content field in the button, I'm gonna use the command, which means whenever I execute this command, link to this uh, field can be executed. Right. And I think it's too big. It's too small right now. Like it's bigger. a bit too small. You need for for a design. You need just to have. That's right. This big. All right. Designer said. Simplistic, you know. Yeah. <laughs> Can't miss. One it. button UI. You know? <laughs> <laughs> so now I'm gonna uh, set the content of my button to be uh, search. And where are you doing that? Um, I'm doing oh, so we're exposing here a property you grid, a list of properties. We have here the property grid, but that it's very similar to Visual Studio. Yeah. And it lists all the properties for this control. And right. whenever you drop in any custom control that has a bunch of properties, they're all listed here. You can data bind, you can animate these properties on the timeline, you can do any kind of stuff with it. And you can see it can be in the categorized mode, in expression mode, in painless mode. And it actually tells you here what kind of um, uh, interface elements you have. So system, windows, controls, button. It's a little bit dev-oriented, but again, we really want to take uh, the, develop the designers on a, transi on a transition between the designer's world to the developer's world in an easy way. Just, you know, so now you have a language to tell them what to, what to code against, right? You tell yeah. them that thing is called... Yeah, we need to balance that act the best way possible by the time we ship as well. Yeah, so people can tell us, you know, when they download the build, is give us feedback about some of these things. And, you know, it's, it's hard. We, we have the WinFX platform, which is a large platform, and then we have a tool that's for people who necessarily don't know how, how these platforms work. So we, we have a big role here, big mission beyond the tool. So try. Try our best. All right. All right, so I named my button, so I named it by uh, setting the content property here to be search. Yep. And it updated here. You just hit the button. return on your keyboard. Yes. You can also type on it, too. If you select the text tool, you yeah, can also. Yeah, select the text tool here. I'm going to sit down. Button. Sorry. All right, so I created my search widgets on the top. Okay. And now the most important widget, which is the, uh, the list box here to hold. Uh, the thumbnails. Okay, so you're going to put a list box in here? Yeah. Okay. So imagine how difficult it was in any world just to have a list of thumbnails that gets images from the server. Now, all I need to do is to grab the photos array here yep. uh, from the data palette to my scene and say create a list box. All right. And I'm going to bind to the item source field in the list box. And I press OK. Can actually, I start seeing this is the data template, so I'm setting the template how the data is going to look like inside this list box. So I'm starting to get live feeds here uh, from the API because there is a tweak in the constructor that says whenever you instantiate this data, go and do one search. Yeah. So, and these are the this is the list of all the elements inside my uh, list here that I grab. And this is coming from Flickr, right? Yes. This isn't local. This is it's all going these, out and uh, querying so the, the data local. types are local, but the data itself is coming from Flickr. Right, right but I queried the Flickr API exactly. and yeah, Flickr so API see. said it has these items. Right there. Absolutely, it's got wow. links right now. If I say I'm going to I'm going to make this, I'm going to check this, and only I want to have thumbnail that is an image right oh. there. So I'm getting an image. Wow. This guy looks a little bit like John Gossman. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And I'm going to have my Click a photo as a, which is the parent container, as a grid. Okay. So it's a grid that contains an image uh, inside it. That's the very basic uh, format right. of the thumbnail that we're going to have. And I press OK. Oops. I'm getting live data from Flickr right here. I'm getting the list of thumbnails corresponding to the word AMG. And if you change that to... Uh... Well, you cannot change it at design time. Oh, okay. That's something we, okay. we hopefully will be working on. Uh, in the future, okay. But right now, it's um, it's hard coded as the initial value of the variable in uh, in okay. VS. Okay. So the next phase is I created the master uh, area here. I want to create the detail, and I'm going to create a view box 
basically I like view box. So you grabbed, sorry, you grabbed over oh, here a view box. Yeah, <laughs> so I went to the library. Yep. I typed V to go to the view first item starting with V, and I I selected view box. And then you dragged it back over to my C, and I'm going to draw a view box here off the Got it. this size, and switch back to my selection tool, double click, and basically when now, I have, you hit something on the keyboard, what, what did you so do we to have, switch? So I used V, so we used all the keyboard um, axis here, I used V to go to my selection tool, L to go to line, you can see the tool tip ah, here, okay. shows shortcuts, our yeah. keyboard shortcuts here. There's going to be a book on power power to toys for interaction. That's center, right? um, because I use it almost every day, so I, I know now. This, well, that's why I always like going to the conferences for design tools, because you know, somebody like you would be up on stage going boom, 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 and you're going, wow. It's, how did he do that so much more effectively than I did? Yeah, that's know? a feature. That's, that's one of the things when we researched design tools, we understood that this was happening yeah. from our own experiences, plus what we talked to people and did competitive analysis and things like that is keyboard shortcuts are very important to people, and it's just what they use yeah. every day. So. Yeah, for us, the number one thing in Sparkle is productivity. Right. For us, we observed designers and we asked them, what do you guys struggle with? What do you want us to do? And we model the workflow of their applications. And for us, the workflow is the interface. That's how we drive our UI. Yeah. If there is a function that you, if it, there is a task that you're doing over and over, it's running in front of you. It's very easy to access. Yeah. So now with the, you know, the keyboard shortcuts, with the quick jump in the library palette, lots of other features working on this milestone is going to be. Exciting Time job. is money, right? <laughs> so yeah. if you can get a little bit more productive, then exactly. the next guy. Yeah, can... It's all about the experience in Sparkle. Yeah, and also yeah. you stay in this flow. St designers get into this flow state, right? You, you you must recognize that where you just are cranking on something and yeah. and what's it's going on? on? You're getting in a zone and you're just yeah. designing something beautiful. And the less the tool is in the way, the more you get into that flow state, right? And there is actually something we're working on in this milestone because. Some tools actually provide people with the flow experience. <laughs> Meanwhile, people do not actually get productive. They're still in the flow. They're still manipulating pallets around. But they think they're productive. They're not. So if you actually time them, it's going to be different than if you ask them, do you think you're productive? They're going to say yes. But you took all this time to do this sample. while well, they spent all the time manipulating the pallets because they didn't know they were actually doing this interface manipulation operations. It's something we're trying to take completely away you know, you want flow, it's flow on the design board, it's not flow on the interface. Very cool. So, so where are we now? Uh, I double clicked on my view box yep. to make it uh, active, which means whatever item I'm going to create now, it's going to be created inside the view box. Okay. Now, I'm going to create an image. I went to the library palette, I clicked the I to go to the image. Yep. And I'm going to double click the image here. Now, Something happened here that we actually, it's something we're working on fixing. The image now has no source, so it has zero size. Right. Uh, what I need to do is to, specific, to say that this image and the view box snapped around the image because it's resizing to the child of, yep. uh, of the view box. So now I need to go and set the source in the properties palette. I'm going to data bind the source of my image. This is the data binding dialog that has binding to data field, which is which is something coming from the data palette right here. Right. Or binding to an. Oh, so you're going down to take here. Yeah. Okay. This is data field is basically coming from the data palette and element property, which means bind this field or this property to another property of another element. Okay. So here I'm gonna bind it to the uh, list box. selected item in the list box. Okay. So I'm gonna choose list box. Select item is not here. I'm going to choose all properties and selected item. I see the type of selected item that is an object. Again, this is something that's going to be fixed very soon. Um, I don't need to type anymore, but here I need. I know that selected object has a field called image. So I'm just going to type dot image. Okay. So now I'm binding to list box dot selected item dot image. Do you guys have a tutorial coming up? To help help with this stuff, we have or? written tutorials. We're working on video tutorials. Um, lots of support materials coming up. Good, good docs too. Good. Yeah, we got docs covering the whole product. So remember the F1 key. Just press that key. It's okay. okay. You're going to be all right. Just press it. And there's a lot in there about you know Windows Presentation Foundation for designers, and and about the tool. So okay. It's a good idea to go through that. So, uh, 
I specified my data binding here. I'm going to click finish. And now I'm going to go to my uh, list box. It has the selected index as negative 1 by default. I'm going to set it to 0, which is the first item. And immediately I see that there is, well, this one, is, again, it's because. Now, uh, now I'll ask you there. What, what is the selected index? What selected is I selected the list box. By default, the selected index on the list box is negative 1, okay. which means no item is selected. But when I switch it to zero, the list box index selects, starts from zero. I say just select the first one in the list box. And immediately, because my image is bound to the list box, it gets the image uh, corresponding to the thumbnail of the first image. Okay. So now I see live feed is still working here, but because I'm not logged in with my Flickr account, this is something, again, Peter Boyce is working on to get inside the DLL once you can actually have a config file where you're you type your own uh, username and password. You actually, again, the constructor, once you instantiate the object inside Sparkle, it can actually go ahead and read this config file in design time. Okay. Um, so now I have a master detail visualization here. I see that there is a grid line here, which allows me to resize this left and right, but I want to make it actually possible for the user actually to design as well. So I need to have a splitter. Okay. Uh, this is one of the best workflows I like, I like about Sparkle. So I'm going to go to library yep. and click, select G, secret splitter here, and I'm just going to draw a splitter. You just drew that out. <laughs> right here. That's okay. it. He's smart. He knows which. That's all I need. And the application, the grid splitter knows how to resize the closest grid line next to it. So at one time, if I drag this guy, it's going to resize That's cool. um, the master detail interface. Now, the last thing I want to create is um, the navigation widgets. Okay. And I'm going to go to my library, create a stack panel. Now, how do you know you need a stack panel? You need, well, to, you need to stack things. <laughs> stack things. Okay. Yeah, that's that's where, that's where the help comes in. Say, oh, gee, you know, everyone has this stack panel that automatically stacks objects. And you have to learn about a few of these things before you can really get up and run. Right. You know, so. How you yeah, know. I, I love just how powerful the grid is. I use it almost for everything unless I want really specific functionality for my uh, widget to look and behave like. So that's why I'm using step down just to stack three things horizontally and just forget about the layout. Right. If, while you're in the training wheels mode, is, is there a way to uh, mouse over these and get a little bit more detail or do you just hit F1? You know, if you're trying to learn what each like repeat button does or whatever. Not not today. But if you want, you know, today the workflow would be, you know, if you see a repeat button or something, you think, well, that's a user interface control. Press F1. Look for controls or form, and then we'll have explanation of what these things are, I believe. So. Okay. Yeah. Mostly also trying, again, to take the designer's hand, like Manuel says, and carry them to the Avalon or WPF world. Um, it's, it's a challenge for a designer to, to understand how much from WPF I need to understand in order to work with Sparkle. And this is, again, this is something I need, something we need to work carefully on. Like you said, a tooltip that explains this, or a details palette that says, we we'll use this control when you do this and this and this. But yeah. our technical writers are doing a great job at just importing the necessary stuff from WPF uh, inside Sparkle, so you don't need to go actually to the WPF help to read them. Right. So, uh, back here to the stack panel. So we know we have a stack panel. Uh, yeah, <laughs> Sorry. One here. I ran over you guys. <laughs> Don't do it again. One and again, I'm going, I'm working slowly with the interface. I'm not using any keyboard shortcuts now. Okay. So, so selecting stage. the stack panel, and I need to insert controls for the previous page, the page number, and the next page. Okay. So first I'm going to go down in my properties palette and I, I'm going to say I want the orientation of my uh, stack panel to be horizontal instead of vertical. Okay. And going to the data palette, I see that there are three fields here. Um, next page command, previous page command, and page number. Okay. So I'm going to start dragging the previous page command right here and make it a button. And similarly to the search command, make it command, OK. And then I'm going to go here and resize it a bit. Okay. And I'm going to set the 
content in my properties palette to be previous page. Or let's just make it previous. Speak up. Project your voice. Okay. <laughs> speak louder. Okay. Yeah, my my uh, microphone can. So page number. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> All right. Page number. So I'm gonna. I drag and drop page number from my data palette okay. to my stack panel here, and I'm gonna create, I'm gonna create a text box. Uh, bind the field, bind the, the text field, and choose two-way binding. And you can see immediately it's uh, live in page number one right now. Okay. And, and two-way binding means it's going up and uh, expanding well, two-way. Two-way two binding. Way binding means whenever I modify the source, the interface widget will get. Uh, the data. And whenever okay. I modify the interface widget, the source will, will, will update. So here, I'm actually, this number one is not really from the Flickr server, it's from the data object, which is the default uh, value for the variable. Okay. And finally, I'm going to have um, next page command here, and it's going to be a button again, binding the command, and okay, going here, and pressing content will be next. So now I have this whole interface built, ready uh, to deploy. I'm going to use, like in VS, I pressed F5 here, and I see my application. It just wow, that built. was fast. Yeah. We're using MS Build. It's completely, again, integrated with VS. We, you know, we, uh, we build quickly. We have actually results palette. If you have any errors, it shows you how many errors you have, where, where they are. But we anticipate that as as long as you're working on the design board, you don't go and hand tweak the XAML or you're careful about tweaking the XAML, you shouldn't run into any um, parsing or syntax errors. Okay. So here at AMG, I'm going to trigger the search here. You can see it's actually got the first image before the thumbnail. You can see it. it's got the search right here. You know, have, yeah, there you go. You have the grid splitter here works perfectly. I can click next page down here. Goes to the next page. It's the oh. Uh, <laughs> anyway, it's it's, so it's, <laughs> it's real code. Yeah. It's better in the DLL. It's it's actually, yeah, it's a code in the it's, 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 it's something in the DLL that's not working perfectly. Okay. So the next uh, next stage is now I'm debugging. <laughs> so, the next thing is, yeah. I have now this list box. It's a list of images. I want to make it cooler, like you first saw, you know. I want to make it a rat panel that has, you know, images here have different size some thumbnails, I want to have specific size, and I want to make it, you know, nicely to animate whenever I uh, lay out my interface. Yeah. So, um, Sparkle allows me, uh, I got get used to just saying an ID yeah, or an actual designer. Is that a cool or name, cool short name for it's it? expression. That's pretty generic, right? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Well, Let's yeah. have a discussion about this. Thing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We're shock, shock therapy. Yeah. There's like a, you know, a shock thing comes out of the screen. <laughs> <laughs> it's sparkle, yeah. Sparkle. No, don't. <laughs> All right, so. Uh, and I think that the marketing teams have control here. <laughs> <laughs> Even when they're in the room. <laughs> uh, so I'm going to make it a little bit cooler by um, making my list box yeah. has a wrap panel. Right now it has a stack panel inside it. That's why the images are stacked on top of each other. Right. What I need to have is a wrap panel right here. Okay. So I'm going to right click and edit the items panel. Right. And since I don't have a, de I have a default template, but I want to edit a copy of the template. So I'm going to call it, I'm going to give it a default name, items panel template one. Okay. So on the on the uh, object tree here, I see that items panel contains a visualized stack panel. I don't need the stack panel, I'm just going to delete it. Okay. And, and it went away. Uh, okay. Go to, the, yeah, I, I go to the library palette and choose, press W and choose wrap panel here. Yeah. And, and wrap panel is a key WPF concept, yes. right? Yes. And I'm going to double click on it. And you see, immediately it inserts the wrap panel. Right now, it doesn't really show the wrapping because the thumbnail sizes are a little messed up. Okay. So I'm going to scope out here, and I'm going to notice that the wrap panel right here has a horizontal scroll bar that goes probably to infinity, so I need to fix this. Um, 
Currently in Sparkle, we do not expose um, attached properties. Okay. Like um, the, the list has the list is a child of a, a scroll viewer. So we currently cannot do not expose this property, which is disable the horizontal scroll bar. So I'm gonna here we have a uh, design tab and a XAML code tab. Yep. So I switch to the XAML code, and I'm gonna try to find list box here. I found it, this is my list box. And what I need to have is to say, scroll viewer. Again, in future versions, you will not need to type anything almost in the demo, but right now it's just whatever we're not supporting in the product for this CTP. Um, you gotta go there and tweak it a little bit on, on the code. Okay. And I'm gonna say scroll viewer dot horizontal scroll bar visibility equals disabled. And if I type any, it will tell me if I have any syntax error here. Yeah. So uh, I went back to my design, and I can see that now I don't have a horizontal scroll bar. Wow. But they still look a little bit uh, jammed together. Yeah. yeah. So now I want to edit the item template, which is the template of the item, which is now just a thumbnail, a grid. Remember when we created the data binding, I said I want a grid with an image inside. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to go ahead, right click on my list, and edit the item template. And I'm going to edit the template because there is already an existing template that the data binding created for me. So I clicked on edit template, and I can see that I have a grid and an image here. Now I'm just going to, now to make the, the cool smooth move animation, we call it smooth move. Um, it's a custom control that Peter Boyce gave me as uh, a DLL. So I'm going to go ahead here and insert my DLL to make these custom controls available for me. Okay. Uh, so again, I'm not going to use any keyboard shortcuts. Project, add item. And on my desktop, I'm going to navigate to UI widgets and navigate to the bug folder and use my UI widgets DLL. Okay. And again, inserted it in the reference references here, but most importantly, if I go to the library, I'm going to find UI widgets here, and it has arc, smooth move, and that penalty. The one I'm going to use right here is smooth move. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead, select my grid, and cut. And with this item template activated, I'm going to insert smooth move. And Are you done? Yeah, so okay. I double clicked smooth move on the library and inserted it in the object tree here. Got it. And then smooth move will be the parent container of the grid containing the image. So this specifies the behavior of each item individually. Okay. And then I'm going to just right click and paste. Okay. So now I have a grid, smooth move, grid, image. Uh, what I need to do is uh, to go to my image and grid, make sure their size is set to auto. Uh, and then make the smooth move size, which is my thumbnail size, like for example, 100 by 100. Okay. So in the size, I'm, I selected the, the object, um, the smooth move yep. object on the timeline, then I'm gonna go to the layout palette. And I say that the size here is nan and nan, which is something we're still, nan is short for not a number, which is the best uh, acronym we found for auto. But it's it's perfect for designers, you know? <laughs> no, it's actually it's 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 taking it's the designer's <laughs> hand to the <laughs> developer's world. Yeah. Yeah. But we're working on getting this better in, uh, like, to say auto or something in future versions. Okay. Um, right, actually, there's a way if I right click here and we have say a few more minutes. Auto size, horizontal, and vertical. Five minutes. Horizontal and vertical should be um, uh, enabled. It's better, better naming than just saying the nan and that. So, uh, the smooth move, I want the smooth move to be, instead of nan, I just want it 100. By 100. And I can see that my images here start to resize. It's still clipped because the grid has a different size. I just want to right click and say auto size horizontal and auto size vertical. Ah, okay. And now, if I go back to my design board and resize this thing here, you can see actually I'm getting this uh, real time cool. effect in design time. Um, so let me resize this thing a little bit so I can get actually the effect here. And pretty much I now implemented the whole uh, Flickr browser. All that remains is just a bunch of tweaks, a 
press F5 again, I search here. Um, you know, I have the split splitter if I invoke the search. Yeah, I'll wait. <laughs> yeah, the network is pretty slow at Monday morning. So now yeah. I have the whole effect working. I, if I make it full screen, everything works perfectly. I select an image. That was very hard. There's the splitter. Yeah, the splitter awesome. works. Yeah, I mean, like, how cool is that? We, did we, we didn't touch any of Peter Blois' code, but we saw all these fields and the commands. You can create a button from it. It's, how many C sharp code lines did I type? None. Zero. Right yeah. now, yeah. So that's about it. That's the productivity for designers. Nice. So you don't need to know much. Just enjoy it. Are you guys going to give out that smooth move uh, DLL? Yeah, yeah. We, we're, we're thinking about prepping lots of cool DLLs. I mean, a lot of developers have been working on a bunch of nice uh, custom controls and effects. Uh, and it's mostly, again, it's mostly done in Spark, but, but with a little bit more code on the CM side. Yeah. Very cool Very stuff. Good. Really cool stuff. <laughs> I was like, wow. <laughs> and, you're, and, you're, and you're more of a developer guy, and you say it's No, I'm so more of a designer. More designer. <laughs> okay. I don't write code. <laughs> I, I just act like I, play, I do design code, develop code. But okay. No, I'm more of a designer. This is good stuff. Really good stuff. So yeah, I mean, you, you said are you going to give this out? You know, we'll do our best. Everybody independently is like blogging on their end. There's going to be links to the blogs okay. on our main site. You know, and uh, I have a bunch of I loaded my gun with samples and, and things to talk about on my blog. And you know, everybody's been doing that, so it's yeah. going to be a great ride. So cool, and we'll have this up tomorrow morning. So yeah, yeah. absolutely. Um, and the message and, and you get it. Anybody can get it free. You don't have to be an MSDN Universal subscriber no, or anything no, like that. It's not MS. com. It's not MSDN. <laughs> Just go ahead and download it. Excellent. And please, please, please give us as much feedback as yeah. you can. I mean, this is what we're working on now is getting, you know, designers happy with it. Just use it as much as you can. Give us right. As much when when did, did you guys have you announced a date when you're planning to ship this or no, not, no, yet. not yet, not yet. Okay. But you know, and part of that depends on what kind of feedback we get as well. So this is a, a great opportunity to, for people to play with this and right. and um, have their say in it. If if everybody comes back and says, you know, when can I have it? Uh, versus if, if we find problems or issues that we really need to address. So yeah. that's what we're looking at. So yeah, try it out. See what you think. Let us know. Oh, we didn't talk about deployment. So once I build a cool app like sure. this. Sure. So no, runs in browser, for example. Oh, yeah. that's cool. I have an app running in a browser. And so that's one of the way you want it, you want to go. Uh, you, can, you can have this as kind of a fine little sample. We have something following the mouse. Yeah. And it has got kind of some code running behind. But the code is right here. Oh. You know, very small code. Ten lines of code. That's right, because some of this thing happens in C sharp, some of this thing happens on the XAML, uh, so it's not all code. And so you can change the properties of this object, it bounces around, it's pretty fun. You see no, the, the performance on this is really good. It's off the hook, baby. This uh, DirectX 9, if you have the DirectX 9 card, you know, WPF has all kinds of stuff going on there, accelerating your experience. So. Uh, so that's one of the, you asked about deployment, that's one of the deployment model is a, a web application. But it could be, you know, and that's, you can make it so it's uh, um, partial trust, so it has less feature, but it's it's very secure environment, sandbox type thing. And then, you know, the application that Amir showed you was a an actual smart client application that runs and could install your program program file, start bar, and things like that. So right. Now, my machine doesn't have the WPF framework on it. It doesn't have the latest uh, .NET runtimes. Mm -hmm. I click on a link that says, hey, download this cool mm -hmm. app you built. It's obviously going to take a while, right? Because the runtime is 30 meg. Is it uh, .NET 2.0? I believe, and that was deployed months ago. So you know, yeah. if people don't have it, they really need that. Uh, I yeah, I don't know. I think between 20 and 30 meg. I'm not sure. Okay. Uh, but uh, you know, we, we believe that's going to be deployed way before us. And then uh, and then WinFX starts with like 2 meg download, and it goes up to like I think 10 or 12. I don't have a number. Right. But uh, it goes in the background, installs. Downloads very quick, then you can load your content, then it engines in the background, so it kind of goes and makes it faster in the background. But you can already launch your app pretty quick. And even if it's 30 megs, trust me, it's worth it. Yeah. Right. And on our website, uh, I think it's going to be Tuesday, uh, Tuesday morning is going to be up. You're going to have all the list of prerequisites that you need to download in order to get up and running. Okay. Yeah. Now, we didn't do anything with video or audio here, but one of the cool things with WPF is the ability to map video to surfaces. Does this version of Interactive Designer let you bring in video yet? Or? It does. Yeah, so you can bring media in, okay. but uh, the whole, you know, make that a plane, you know, surface, we do this on the images right now, only okay. in the tool, but that will be 
a way to map any any kind of UI onto you know we're, ho we're hoping to by the time we ship. Okay. Uh, right now you can do this with images, and you can go and XAML around. Maybe we can post some snippets around our blog where you can say workflow to get a video in 3D. Right. Know? Well, I can see this going to be used a lot in the uh, signage industry. You know, I, I don't know if you know, but most of the digital signs you see, like in Times Square, mm -hmm. are all done on Windows, right? Oh, okay. Or I was at Reuters, and they have a million-dollar sign in their lobby, which is their showcase of their headquarters. That's cheap. And you could easily build an uh, a interaction designer mm -hmm. app. You know, and use all sorts of weird video because they have a lot of video yeah. content. So they, these people might already have .NET 2.0 installed. And I just yeah. want to say that when we say it's all 30 meg, 30 meg, Avalon is not 30 meg. Yeah, WPF is not 30 meg. .NET 2.0 ships with new computers. Like 85 percent of new computers I have a specific number or something like this. So you buy a new computer, people buy a new computer, they have .NET on it. Yeah. Um, and then then you have. Well, for for that industry, the downloads aren't that big a deal. Right. Right. right, right. Because that's, you're only that's a kiosk for a, a huge sign in Times Square. You have you know six machines maybe running that yeah. that sign, and so you uh, only have six machines to load it on. It's that's not right. a big deal. Uh, uh, it's it's not a, retar a retardation on adoption, right? I just want to say a little point about the last point. Um, right now, Sparkle uh, EID uh, targets the full WPF framework, um, but you know WPF has this thing called WPF E that will come up sometime in the future. Yeah. There's no official word from us. We you know we're not authoring that, but eventually we want to do that so that WPF E means everywhere that runs on every computer you can find yeah. pretty much. And so you know it's a subset of it. And think of the ideas. In, you know, we have a video uh, with the E team, and the e, the e framework lets you run on uh, like a Macintosh. Yes, yeah, that's right. That's right. And you know you, it's XAML as well. So you know I imagine our editor could do that. You know, but that's just speculations. Okay. So cool. Anything else I need to know? About games yeah. or trainers? The coolest product Microsoft ever came up with. Ta da! Uh, the Xbox 360 team might have a little. <laughs> no, 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 I don't know until, I, don't know until I can find one in store. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> Two success, to say, Which is cooler? Xbox until I can put my hands or? on it, it's not cool. No, it's really cool, cool yeah. stuff. Yeah, there's, it's great. Make me proud. Makes me proud. Yeah. Xbox 360, I didn't see this yet. No. <laughs> yeah. You, and this doesn't cost $400 right now to try either. It's so. <laughs> free, baby. <laughs> well, thank you very much, guys. Thanks thank you. Much. Great stuff and uh, good good job on the launch tomorrow. Thank so. you. Thank you very Thanks. much. Thank you.